Hey, what is up guys, and welcome to another Honkai Star Rail video. Alright, so it's time for another Memory of Chaos video. The turbulence for this week benefits those of the Hump Path or anyone that really does single target damage. So for anyone that uses Zile or the newly introduced Hunt character Topaz, it will greatly benefit your run. But other than that, everything's the same, same bosses, same characters that I used last week. Regardless, I still hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. Alright, so we start the fight off with a Fushuan Technique and initiate with Asta Technique for maximum uh, attack stacks on Asta. And we're just going to basic attack here. Followed by the Silver Wolf implanting of Quantum Element. Just focus down the 8. Mostly due to the turbulence, you don't really have to focus on the side enemy uh, trash mobs or adds. basic attack. We save the ultimate until everyone takes a turn. Now we defense break the 8 with Silver Wolf. Refresh the matrix with Fu Xuan, immediately popping the ultimate. Right. Now we pay attention here. So I'm going to use Zile's ultimate right as it's up. And you're going to notice here that she actually gets a Resurgence buff because the ultimate kills off one of the side mobs. And there's Asta's ultimate, by the way, because of the memory turbulence. So see, I got the Resurgence buff there. So you actually don't have to always focus the side mobs for the Resurgence buffs. This is mostly for people who use Zile. If you know the damage can kill off one of the adds uh, by focusing the main target that has the memory turbulence, uh, that's one way you can cheese the memory turbulence and get your Resurgence proc. Anyways, on to the second wave now. We're focusing down the Maiden because she's marked with the uh, increased damage. Or not increased damage, uh, it deals additional damage to all the other enemies uh, on the field when you hit that target. So we're hitting the Maiden for now because she has the buff or debuff. And now it's still on the Maiden, which is good because she activated her little... She activated her little, like, uh, I don't know what it's called, but... You have to hit her, basically, to prevent her from doing a lot of damage. We weakness broke her, so that solves a lot of issues there. So here I'm just waiting for uh, Silver Wolf. I'm checking here to see if I have enough energy from just a basic attack to get her ultimate. And I do, so I don't need to waste my skill on the implant. So now we're going to defense break the Maiden into a Zile ultimate here to do big damage. 126k, not as much as I thought. Right, Ape is going to jump on Fu Xuan, which is fine. She's tanky. And she has her ultimate up. Right. Now we should easily be able to finish her off. Get the Resurgence proc. Unfortunately, the Ape doesn't have a Quantum Weakness implanted on him yet. So now we're going to do that. Once again, he's awake. Here we're just going to rip the Asta ultimate because I want to try and finish off this fight within this current cycle. And here we go for Zele's ultimate. And it should do just barely enough. 100k? Okay, and we're just going to finish him off with Asta's E. There you go, and that's the first half. Alright, second half we start off with a Bailu technique, two Ting Young techniques. And then we're going to initiate the fight with Payless Technique for the additional Defense Shred. Since my Imbiber Lunane is idle on 2, he doesn't really need the extra Substitute Skill Point since he generates 3 whenever he ultimates. We immediately uh, use Ting Young's ultimate for most energy efficiency. And I believe the middle one is the one that has the mark. The middle Centaur. We're going to rip Imbiber Lunane's ultimate here. Yeah, the middle, the middle uh, centaur has it. And Embiru Lunane actually does insane damage with this uh, memory turbulence because he already does blast damage, but the fact that the adjacent or other enemies take even more damage when you hit that main target is insane. Here, I opt for a skill and an ultimate so I can uh, weakness break both the centaurs, preventing them from dealing damage to my team. 
This is actually a very uh, important step that I did here. Because I did a few runs before where I did not calculate the weakness break. And even if one of the centaur hits you, it's still a lot of damage. So the best way to do that is just weakness break them. Especially since it's uh, freeze. It also uh, prevents them from taking an action. So this is Ting Young's ultimate again on Imbiber Lunane. I believe I end up using his ultimate here. But I just want to get some extra skill points before I use it. Because I do want to finish off this half. Uh, this first half in within the cycle. All right, on to the second wave. On to the Kakarocha. Swarm Disaster Kakarocha. So just hit the main target. Or actually, no. I decided to uh, attack buff my Imbiber name because I was like, I was at full skill points. And I was like, I didn't really want to waste it. And Pella was just going to regenerate that skill point back with a uh, basic attack. I wanted to get full attack buffs, all three of them, for my Imbiber Lunane here. Wow. 188k damage. Quite insane. Alright. So thanks to Bailu's ultimate, we don't take much damage because of the... Uh, actually, it's thanks to Bailu's talent, but her ultimate is the thing that provides the uh, invigoration buff. Here, I think I just top off Ting Young and Pale just in case, because I know he's going to hit everyone here. Lunane's getting really low here. I don't use Ting Young's ultimate yet, because as you see, Imbiber Lunane has literally like, he has like 5 or 10 energy before he has his ultimate. So now I chain his ultimate into his triple attack. And now we use Ting Young's ultimate on top to regenerate energy and provide him with additional increased damage for his. Uh, next enhanced basic attack, and this will weakness break the uh, Kakarocha. Basic attack into ultimate. Since Pela has pretty high energy regeneration, I'm not too worried about just ripping the ultimate there. Provide attack buff again, and now we need to heal our Dragon Boy. I got lucky there, got a double bounce on the uh, Imbiber Lunane, so I don't have to rip the ultimate on, uh, what do you call it, Bailu just yet. I think I, yeah, I use the ultimate here just in case Ting Young's getting really low and she also has five stacks of the wind shear. So I don't want her to die or proc by loose passive just yet. And I go for the skill three, just enough damage to go into phase two. We save the ultimate until the, the bug spawns additional bugs. I make a mistake here. I should have targeted the ultimate to the left where that one bug is the one that outrages your entire team. I made the same mistake last time. But this time I got lucky later on, you'll see. And uh, if it weren't for my luck, this run might have been bricked or it might have taken me an, an additional cycle or two. But we got lucky later and I'll explain why. So we ended up just focusing the main target. The reason why I didn't actually focus it to the left also is because I thought I had enough damage to just straight up kill the uh, outrage bug too with the memory turbulence. But obviously you can see that's not the case. So now I give... Uh, Dan Hung some energy. I use Payless ultimate, hoping that this would kill the Outrage bug, because he's about to take his turn. I don't. Luckily, he targets Dan Hung here. Dan Hung has his ultimate. Now, we can guarantee kill off that Outrage bug, and we advance forward. But, I mean, we have Bailu's uh, passive, so he just comes back to life. And with this, we basically finish off the bug. Yeah, a little RNG on my side there to finish it a little bit early. Uh, with only 5 cycles and 25 cycles left. Alright, now I'm going to quickly go over my characters and their gear. Let's start off with Silverwolf. These are her stats. Pretty much the same, like I said. Didn't really bother with any upgrades. Or rather, I was too lazy to organize my gear. So, Lycone. Traces. Almost maxed out. Relics. And of course, Eidolons, she does not have any. Eidolon zero. Next is Fu Xuan. These are her stats. Lycone is Moment of Victory. Traces. Relics, which are... I'm working on them. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, some of them are only at plus nine. Eidolons, she's at Eidolon 0. Alright, next is Little Bailu. 
These are her stats. Light cone, perfect timing. Traces, relics. Eidolons, of course she's at Eidolon Zero. All right, next is Asta. She's only level 69 and limit broken to five star. I just haven't bothered grinding the ascension material needed for her. Regardless, these are her stats. Even though she's only level 69, surprisingly enough, she's actually quite bulky. I think it's because I gave her a HP or defense uh, headpiece. We'll see you later on. Her light cone is Dance Dance Dance. These are her traces, fairly low level or low investment. Alright, these are her relics. Oh yeah, she does have a... I gave her a gear with really high HP and defense substats. Apparently she has an attack percent body piece. That's that's weird. Speed. I think I put this one just for the speed. Yeah, it's probably just for the speed. And the two-piece HP set as well. Eidolons, of course, she's at Eidolon 6, making her a very strong Harmony character. Alright, next is Zile, who did surprisingly well thanks to this week's turbulence in the Memory of Chaos. These are her stats. Light cone. Traces are almost maxed out. Relics. Eidolon, she's at Eidolon Zero. Alright, now it's in Biber Lunane's turn. These are his stats. I need more crit rate. Currently working on that. Just a little bit too lazy to go through my relic inventory. Honestly, anyways, this is his light cone on the fall of a neon. Honestly, though, I didn't see any, like, good relics pop up. Because I did, like, breeze through the relics as I was grinding the imaginary domain. I didn't really see anything that could really be used on him. Anyways, these are his traces completely maxed out. These are his relics for now. They'll have to do. I mean, they're not too bad. They're okay. It's just, like... It would be better if this had like uh, maybe speed as one of the substats and maybe a little bit more crit rate. Although that's already a pretty decent amount of crit rate, if I might say so myself. Uh, temporary boots, not the right set. And I eventually want to switch to the Rutilant uh, set for the extra crit rate and the extra damage to basic attack. But this is what he has currently. Which is also decent, I guess. Eidolons, of course you guys already know, he's at Eidolon 2. Alright, now it's time for Ting Yong. These are her stats. Lycone is but the battle isn't over. Traces. Relics. Unfortunately, she does not have any Eidolons. She's at Eidolon 0. And last, but definitely not least, is my Palo. These are her stats. Okay, this is how lazy I am. I haven't even bothered building her uh, Lycone, the the sweaty Lycone for the Nihility uh, path. Yeah, I'm just using the <laughs> Natasha Lycone that I've been using this whole time. These are her traces. Yeah, her traces are pretty much done. I don't think I want to put any more investment in her. These are her relics. I'm probably going to opt for a different set other than the Musketeer 2-piece because the attack percent really do doesn't do anything. I'm probably just going to give her either broken pieces later on or either the HP defense set or maybe even the damage reduction set if I ever go back to the Quantum Domain. Eidolons, she's at Eidolon 4. Okay guys, well that's going to be it for this Honkai Star Rail video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next Honkai Star Rail video. Peace. Where did the toys go from? Wanna spy?